Hey, it's your pickler Tony coming to you today from Clearwater, Florida. Uh, Going to work today with my friend Jay Simonovis uh, on a uh, really uh, an error that I see happening a lot when I'm playing out there and when I'm teaching, which is basically uh, uh, players combining or rushing the movement with the stroke. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that today and show you how not to do that and why it's important not to do that. So let's get into it. All right, so what do I mean by, by rushing the movement and the stroke? What I mean by that is what a lot of players do is they basically step and hit at the same time. So they'll come forward, whether you hit like this or like this, they'll step and hit or, or step while they're hitting. And that's what you don't want to do. That creates a lot of errors. A lot of times what happens, particularly if you have a pendulum stroke, is you end up hitting the ball up towards your thumb. Because what happens is you're stepping and hitting and the ball is coming up and into your paddle as you're making the stroke or as you're hitting the stroke. So what you want to do is you want to break it down into two different parts. You want to break it down into you want to step and then stroke. Now that doesn't mean there has to be a big gap. There doesn't have to be, you know, five seconds between the step and the stroke. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that your step and your stroke are two different activities and not combined. Let's see how that looks. First, let me show you how the step hit works at the kitchen or near the kitchen and dinking because sometimes people play a little off the kitchen and they step hit and they're dinks. Uh, also, when they have to step forward to get a dink, they'll step hit as opposed to step hitting. I'm going to run this through at regular speed, see if you can catch the difference when I'm step hitting and when I'm step and then hitting. And then I'll run it at slow motion so that we can uh, you can see it and you can figure out which one's which. And you'll see the difference in the two shots. So let's get into it. Let's look at a few dinks so you can see the difference between the step then hit and then the step hit. And you should be able to see how there's much more control in the step then hit than when you're step hitting. When you're step hitting, you really can't control the shot uh, because you're rushed in the shot. Let's look at it in slow motion again. So this is how you want to move, which is basically a step first here uh, and then a hit. So it's a two part process. You have a step followed by a hit. While they're part of one motion, they're still two different things. So first you're going to step like this and then you're going to hit the ball. You'll see in the step hit how the step and the hit becomes one single motion. This sort of combined motion where you're basically stepping through the shot or you're moving through the shot uh, can cause errors in your game and it really takes away your ability to control the shot and have direction so or good direction. So you'll see a step hit is not the way to go. Let's look at it one more time. You'll see how you're much under much more control when you step then hit than when you run in and step hit or move in and step hit the shot. Let me show you now what the step hit looks like from the baseline. A lot of times what happens is you'll get served, you hit a return or serve, you'll step hit and you'll miss it or you won't be able to control it. Uh, those are real problems from step hitting. And then same thing, you'll serve, the return team will hit the, the uh, return back to you. You're going to go in for your third shot and you step hit and you don't have any control to be able to hit a nice third shot or hit a nice drive off a of step hit. So let's see what those look like. The issues from step hitting at the baseline are similar to the issues from step hitting up at the no volley zone or at the kitchen. Uh, what you'll see is when I step hit through that ball, I lose control of the shot. When I step then hit, I have a nice control shot. So here's what you don't want to do again. You don't want to step hit in one motion like this. Uh, what you do want to do is you want to break it down into two parts just like we did before, which is I take my step here first, and then I get set up to hit the shot, and then I can execute a nice uh, stroke after I'm nice and set up to hit the shot. So you want to have a two-part process, which is you want to have not the step hit like this, you want to have a step and hit. By understanding that movement and shot execution are two parts of one process, you'll be able to improve your shot making, which will reduce your unforced errors and allow you to have better direction and control of your shots. Give it a try.